Find the following products and quotients. If you look at all of these problems, you will notice that we are either dividing or multiplying by a power of 10. When we say power of 10, we mean numbers like 10, 100, 1000. Down at the bottom, you can see the rule for multiplying a decimal by a power of 10 and the rule for dividing a decimal by a power of 10. If we multiply a decimal by a power of 10, we are going to move the decimal point to the right as many places as there are zeros in the power. If there's not enough digits, we add extra zeros. Now let's look at the rule for dividing. If we're dividing by a power of 10, we move the decimal point to the left as many places as there are zeros in the power. If there's not enough digits, we add on zeros. So we're going to use these two rules for parts A through F. Let's begin with part A. The first thing I notice is that it's a multiplication problem, so that tells me I'm going to move my decimal point to the right. Now I have to decide how many places. So I look at my power of 10, which is 100, and there's two zeros in 100. So that means I'm moving my decimal place right two places. So if I have 83.2, I'm going to move that decimal place two places to the right. And I'm going to fill in any gaps with zeros. So the gap right there is going to get filled in with a zero. Now my decimal point is at the end of that number, and nothing comes after the decimal point, so I don't really need the decimal point in my final answer because my final answer is going to be a whole number, 8,320. Let's look at part B. I'm dividing, so that tells me I'm moving to the left. The number 10 has one zero, so I move to the left one place. So I have 0 0.45, and I'm going to move that decimal point one place to the left. So that's going to become 0 0.045, but it's always nice when your decimal is smaller than one to fill in that one's place with a zero just to be clear that it's 0 0.045. Let's look at C. I'm multiplying again, so I know I'm going to the right. The number 10 has one zero, so I'm going to the right one place. And instead of writing this one out, I'm just going to move the decimal point in the problem itself. So it's going to go one place to the right, so the decimal point is going to come after the zero before the four. So 130.4579. Okay, let's look at part D. I'm dividing, so I know I'm moving to the left, and 1,000 has three zeros, so I'm moving to the left three decimal places. 3.12, and if I go three spaces to the left, I'm going to have to fill in two of those blank spaces with zeros. So this becomes 0 0.00312. Again, notice how I entered a 0 in that 1's place. Let's look at part E. I'm multiplying, so it's to the right. 100 has two zeros, so I'm moving to the right two places. Now I take the number 16, which is a whole number. Notice how we don't see a decimal point in the number 16, but it's implied that it's at the end or after the 6. So if I move that two places to the right, I'm going to have to fill in two zeros. So now my answer is going to be 1600, then comes the decimal point. This is still a whole number since nothing comes after the decimal point. So this is 1600. And finally, part F, I'm moving to the left because it's division. There's two zeros, so I'm moving to the left two places. But again, 3,245 is a whole number, so I don't see the decimal point that I'm supposed to move. I have to understand that it's implied that it's at the end of my number. And now I'm going to bring that back two places. So this becomes 32.45. And those are my final answers.